Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to first thank the conference organizers for giving me the opportunity to speak on our work uh, with HIV exposed zero negative men who have sex with men and what seems to be uh, their unique mucosal immune response within their rectal mucosa. So I'll start to introduce the project by uh, talking about our very broad um, biological question, which is why is rectal mucosa so susceptible to HIV infection? Uh, HIV acquisition through uh, mucosal exposure is highest within the rectal compartment compared to other sites of exposure, such as the oral or vaginal mucosa. Uh, much of the current literature uh, looks at the actual tissue layer uh, of the mucosal tissue uh, in terms of susceptibility, looking at the very thin damage-prone epithelial layer, the high abundance of HIV target cells, and the easily accessible uh, gut-associated lymphoid tissue, uh, which allows the virus to easily disseminate into the body. What I'm more interested in is the mucosal fluid layer that lies over top of the actual tissue. Uh, this serves as the first point of, in, of contact uh, with the virus upon exposure um, and uh, we believe is a very important immune barrier in determining rectal uh, susceptibility. We've previously recently published a, a proof of concept study that showed that um, mucosal fluid uh, isolated from the rectum is able to knock down uh, HIV infection in vitro and contains a plethora of immune proteins that could be playing a role in uh, determining HIV pathogenesis through the rectum. And it's definitely something we should be looking at further in terms of understanding this phenomenon. Um, so moving forward from that, uh, I study HIV-exposed zero-negative individuals. Uh, these, this is a cohort of men from the Gay Men's Health Clinic in Stockholm, Sweden. These are HIV-negative men who have been with their HIV-positive partner for five years or more. Uh, they are HIV-negative, uh, as determined by PCR. They have no IgG response, yet uh, some, many of them have uh, mucosal IgA responses that are able to neutralize primary isolates of HIV, uh, which gives us kind of a uh, hypothesis that they are, blocking, uh, mucosal, or they are blocking infection at the level of their mucosa and uh, makes them an interesting model to study. Uh, our ideal target application from looking at these men is to somehow exploit this protective me mechanism at their mucosal layers and translate that into a therapeutic such as a microbicide that could block HIV infection in other individuals. Uh, so how we study these men is we use proteomics to uh, identify correlates of protection in this population. So I have my Hessen uh, individuals as well as a low risk cohort. We isolate their mucosal fluid through, um, by taking a lavage, we can then um, isolate the protein, uh, protein content and uh, can do uh, comprehensive identification and quanti relative quantification of these proteins using label-free tandem mass spectrometry. From there, we can do statistical analysis to see whether uh, proteins are differentially expressed between these two groups and are then said to correlate with protection. Though we can see many protein factors that already have previously established uh, roles in HIV infection, we can also find new proteins that uh, their, their role in mucosal infection of HIV is less clear. Uh, when we find these targets, we can screen them in a PBMC assay using uh, both an X4 and an R5 tropic virus and see if they can knock down infection both, uh, by measuring uh, intracellular and extracellular P24. So our proteomic study uh, was able to identify uh, around 300 proteins commonly expressed between the two groups. Um, about 110 of those had immune functions, and then 20 of those, uh, after correcting for multiple comparisons, were differentially expressed or actually overexpressed within the Hessen group. This included many uh, immune proteins such as immunoglobulins, both forms of IgA, and antimicrobials. But what was of particular interest, and I'll focus on today, are antiproteases that we found elevated in the Heston phenotype. Um, antiproteases is an immunity. So their complete role has not been fully elucidated in terms of HIV infection. Uh, previous work with uh, looking at natural anti-HIV compounds within the blood has shown that alpha-1 antitrypsin and a specific peptide within that can act as an HIV fusion inhibitor. Um, and that's from work in around 2007. But in the mucosal tissue, this is less defined. Um, uh, Antiproteases have general roles in immunity, such as regulation of proteases, which can contribute to promotion of wound healing, as well as uh, downregulation of inflammation. But what was of particular interest to us is we've done a previous similar work like this in the female genital tract secretions of uh, a Hessen cohort of HIV, um, a Hessen cohort of commercial sex workers in Nairobi, Kenya. 
And these women also had a high abundance uh, of serpents and cystatins in their uh, female genital tract secretions. So that's two different populations, two different areas of the world, and two different biological compartments that we've now seen these pr proteins overabundant. So they made it very interesting for us to want to follow up on this. Uh, one of the things I wanted to make sure of before uh, we truly associated these with protection is uh, our low-risk cohort is essentially men who are having protected sex. So they're not getting exposed to uh, semen, microbes, or HIV. So what we could do to try and uh, make sure that this was actually innate expression rather than just us viewing an acute fair response is um, uh, I can correlate protein expression uh, of these uh, protein expression with their partner's viral load, which ranges from very low at less than 50 copies, all the way up to a couple hundred thousand. And that didn't have any uh, significant effect, um, as you'll see in the blue. Uh, moving on, I mentioned some of these men have HIV neutralizing IgA within their rectal mucosa. That would indicate that some maybe have had more of a response to the virus in the past that could be skewing our data. Uh, again, nothing significant came up. As well, when we looked at frequency of exposure, so frequency of seminal uh, seminal microbial, all these kinds of exposures didn't seem to have any effect on our antiproteases when we viewed them in this way. Um, so from there we went and uh, we had a recombinantly produced both these uh, antiprotease 1 and antiprotease 2 as I refer to them, um, and put them in a PBMC culture line. Uh, I'll direct your attention to panel B and D first, which we saw um, antiprotease 2 didn't seem to have any real effect on HIV infection in our tissue model. This was uh, p-values greater than 1 and did not seem to get reach any um, increase in inhibition. Um, but when we looked at antiprotease 1, we saw that uh, at increasing concentrations of this protein on in our infection model, we were able to uh, increase inhibition of infection. And that is while maintaining um, a high level of cell viability within our culture. So this makes this a, a promising new target for us to keep looking at in terms of uh, a, a mucosal protein that could be uh, affecting HIV infection through the rectum. So in conclusion, um, our HES and MSM that we are studying overexpress antiproteases. Antiproteases do not seem to be correlating with exposure. Antiprotease 1 showed antiviral properties in vitro so far, and that's in the PBMC culture and while maintaining cell viability. Our future direction is to fo uh, follow up with these uh, antiproteases in a colorectal explant model. Those are currently underway and they look very promising. As well, we want to tease out the actual mechanism of how this protein could be uh, inhibiting infection in these cells. And of course, application is to increase our knowledge of HIV pathogenesis through the rectum, as well as guide future microbicide research. Uh, just briefly, I wanted to acknowledge our lab that's pictured, uh, specifically my mentor, uh, Adam Bergner and Blake Ball, as well as my scientific advisors, Kevin and Emmanuel, the rest of the University of Manitoba group, as well as our National Microbiology Laboratory, and, and of course, Frank Plummer, who his initial work with HIV-resistant women in the Kenyan cohort is what has led to my work today, our collaborators at the Carolinsky Institute, and of course, the MSM and Hessen participants who uh, donated to the study. Thank you.